Når man er parat, så bliver det et spændt sang, det er man. So as you do today, the feast of St. Philip and James, uh, two of the apostles, and uh, uh, again, we, we, we see how um, those who follow Christ, uh, their lives are not easy. I mean, all the apostles were, were martyrs, all of them. So I'm wearing red today. Every time there's an apostle, you're going to see red, right? Even for St. John, because they tried to kill him and it just didn't work. They exiled him. Uh, but St. James, right? St. James is also called St. James the Just or St. James the Less, to distinguish him from the other James, uh, Peter, James, and John, right? Uh, uh, the the, the uh, James and John were brothers, um, and they, they were, those three were always be ta- being taken apart, and so uh, that's James the Greater, and this is James, James the Less, uh, son of Alphaeus, also known as Cleopas. Remember the um, uh, road to Emmaus? Uh, Cleophas, the disciple to whom our Lord was speaking, that was this St. James's father, Uh, St. James had a brother called uh, uh, Jude Thaddeus, also an apostle, and another brother called Simeon, who would become St. Simeon, second bishop of Jerusalem, after this St. James. This St. James was the first bishop of Jerusalem. So just some some bracketing information there, which is important for us to know, because as I've said before many times, uh, our faith is not, the origins of our faith are not shrouded in mystery. We know all these things who their fathers were, who their relations were, where they were bishop, how they died, when they died, all these kinds of things. What they wrote, right? Uh, The epistle of St. James was written by today's James. This is the James who wrote that epistle, which Martin Luther called the epistle of straw because it conflicted with his personal uh, interpretation. Um, So St. James um, was was known as a just. He was very much like, actually like St. John the Baptist. Uh, he was a Nazarite, didn't cut his hair, wore rough clothing, uh, did not take strong drink. Uh, so a very ascetical uh, uh, life of St. Uh, James. Um, he would be known actually as James the Just because he would spend so much time on his knees that they resembled um, uh, the camel's hooves, like very, very calloused and, and rough. As some would say he would, he would have his forehead, there was a callus on his forehead from where he would uh, be leaning on, on the ground as well. So uh, very pious. The Jews themselves, even after he was preaching Christ and was, was nominated the Bishop of Jerusalem by St. Peter, the Jews would not persecute him because of his piety. In fact, they would seek to touch the hem of his garment because they believed that his piety with God w- w- was powerful. And this, these are Jews who are not converting. Even they are respecting St. James uh, the Greater. Uh, he is the one who in Acts, I can't remember the exact um, uh, chapter, But in Acts, the apostles are wondering, what do we do about the Gentiles who, who are converting? Uh, what, what are they going to be held to? And it's St. James who says, he quotes um, the old Levitical a Mosaic law, and he says, this is, what, this is what Gentiles were held to when they converted in the old law. Why should we hold them to anything greater now? And so it was seemed good. It was what people were already doing anyways. So they wrote it out and sent it out uh, uh, for distribution. So it was, this was the, that St. James who came up with that. Um, that was the first ecumenical council, the Council of Jerusalem in 51 AD. And so St. James provided the answer uh, uh, to that. Uh, he was martyred eventually. Um, the, uh, the priest, it was 62 AD. There was this jealousy. There was, there was strife. There was, you know, all this kind of thing going on. Uh, so St. James is taken up to the pinnacle of the temple and thrown down to be martyred. And that didn't kill him, actually. He landed um, in, in tremendous pain. He's an old man by this point, And he gets up on his knees, on which he spent so much time, and he prays for his persecutors, uh, for them to be forgiven. And they come down, they stone him, and eventually um, end up hitting him on the head with, with a club. And you may see that sometimes in um, his iconography, see him mar- being martyred with a club. Uh, so that is St. James that we venerate today, and uh, St. Philip along with him, St. Philip and James. There's a, there's a, a cathedral uh, in, in um, uh, Rome, the cathedral of St. Philip and James. Uh, they're, they're been venerated together on this day. Uh, so St. Philip was another apostle called by our Lord, and it was Philip who went to Nathaniel and said, we have found the Lord, like we found the Christ. So just right away, St. Philip was, um, uh, uh, we could say, recognized uh, the, the Messiah. Um, rather practical, uh, when our Lord said he was going to feed the 5,000, uh, it was St. Philip who said 200 denarius would not be enough to feed this many people. How are we going to do that? So this, this is St. Philip we're, we're venerating today. 
And especially um, at the Last Supper, um, when the apostles were arguing about who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, right? They all wanted, they all wanted some kind of position or power. Uh, St. Philip was the one who said to, to, to Christ, as John chapter 14, show us the Father and it is enough. And so we have, that, that's a good contrast to those who are arguing for kind of positions or power, who would be greatest. St. Philip says, show us the Father. Uh, so a good, a good desire for God. Uh, and our Lord responds to him, uh, just those, those amazing words, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Uh, but that would cause us to pause as well, because St. Philip, even though he did have a desire for God, it was a desire for glory, right? A desire for splendor, a desire for a certain sense to be in the presence of power. Show us the Father, show us the glory of the Father, and that's enough. I don't need anything else, I just want the glory of the Father. Well, what does Christ say? Look at me. He who sees me sees the Father. And when we look at Christ, what do we see? We see a man acquainted with suffering, a man of sorrows, who took upon us our infirmities, and we esteemed him as nothing, and we despised him. That's what we see. And when we see that, when we look at Christ and we see that, we see sorrow, suffering, dis just being despised, we see the Father. And think about that. If you despise suffering, if you reject suffering, uh, you reject the Father. Right? You reject Christ. He who sees me sees the Father. He who rejects me rejects the Father. How many times does he have to say that? Also good for us to keep in mind in this time when it seems as if other people are making the decisions. Other people have canceled our masses. Like I said, it's the, the, it's the, the, the bishop or it's the governor or whatever. It's Christ it's asking us something. He who sees me sees the Father. He who sees suffering, he who does suffer, he who accepts suffering. Uh, can you drink the chalice I'm about to drink? We can. Okay, drink it. Right? Uh, so that is our task. That is our task to see the Father when we see Christ. And when we see Christ, we see suffering. Uh, but if, if you look, a good way to think about it, look at any crucifix, any crucifix, and look upon Christ. And then turn it around. And look at the other side. What do you see? It's empty. It's because that side is for us. Right? We're supposed to be on the other side of that crucifix, uh, right there with Christ. Uh, he's right behind us. We are with him. He is with us in suffering. That's where we're going to find Christ. Uh, so the apostles all suffered. They were all martyred. They all gave their lives for Christ. Um, and uh, red is, is that color of blood martyrdom, giving, giving your shedding your blood, giving your life at this one moment for Christ. We can all give our lives at every moment for Christ and achieve that white martyrdom of laying down what I want to do, what we think is best, what, what we would rather do. Uh, we just do what Christ gives us, what God gives us expressed through the circumstances in our life. We accept that. We are accepting Christ. Uh, we're laying down our life for him. Uh, not my will be done, but thine. Uh, so let's ask for the intercession of St. James uh, and, and, and St. Philip uh, for that grace. And God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.